Salvete omnes, this is I'm Emilia, also known as the Martian Geek. And welcome back to another episode of Super Mario Bros. 3. In the last episode, we beat World 1 of the game, culminating in a battle against Larry Koopa. And now, naturally, we're on to World 2, which has a desert theme to it. Also have 23 lives there, I haven't died yet, which is always good. I'm not doing a no-deaths run here, so I fully expect to die sooner or later. Maybe not in this world, but if I don't die at least once in World 3, it'll probably happen in World 5, and if not there, most likely 6 or 7, and if still not there, definitely World 8. But we're not going to worry about those right now. Let's hop right into 2-1. We have some nice desert graphics and a nice desert background, and wait a minute. I just accidentally pea-suited, or however you, whatever you want to call that. Didn't even mean to do that. But yes, we don't have some nice desert music. The desert levels pretty much just use the same basic. Um, not. Well, I guess. I guess I would have called it grassland music, but it's obviously not a grassland, so I really can't. Also, here's a new enemy type. Uh, okay, I'm not gonna destroy all of those, but this I believe is called the Pile Driver Micro Goomba. It's actually a teeny tiny Goomba under what looks like an ordinary block, but it isn't. Also, stars! And I'm not gonna get to use it much. Yeah, that was actually a pretty useless star. And, uh, the Fire Snake respawned. Whoa! And I almost got hit by the Koopa. Actually, is there anything under these? Nope. Okay, so that's another new enemy type, the Fire Snake. It'll make either a little jump or a big jump. And its fiery tail kind of follows it like that. And we have these weird pink structures. Also, if you fly up here, the screen scrolls up and you can get into this pipe. I don't think there's anything in any of these blocks either. Also, a uh, P-switch in an empty room. But, in this game, P-switches actually keep going after you leave the OW sublevel. Uh, that sucked. So you can use that to your advantage, though. In that case, I guess it didn't... Wow, I got hit twice by the same enemy. Nice. I guess it didn't really, it didn't really matter that much, because I could have gotten in there by hitting that block on the bottom. How did I get hit twice by the same dang fire snake? Well, it's worth noting that the fire snakes can indeed jump through the pink walls like that, as you saw. At least I can get one of my hit points back. And also, I'm pretty sure that guy just jumped into the wall. Well, object interaction can be kind of weird sometimes for certain enemies when... depending on their movement. But anyway, empty space, and end of the level. Another pile driver micro Goomba there. I don't remember if they were easier or harder to tell apart from the regular blocks. Also, another P-switch with nothing in the room this time. But there are our coins. Yeah, was, Oh, wow, I'm actually running out of time. It's because I smashed all those blocks at the beginning of the stage. Uh, what I was saying about pile driver micro Goombas is... You can actually tell them apart from the regular blocks because they look a little bit different. Their outline is slightly lighter. So, also another one of these that I'm probably going to fail. Hey, I actually didn't fail it! I don't know if the mushroom's actually any easier to get. If you're just hitting it randomly, it would be because there are two of those and only one flower and one star, but... Oh, whatever. Dang, I had more to say about 2-1 that I kind of didn't have time to. But, anyway, 2-2... Two, two. And it's another grassy athletic stage, except, well, it's a desert, so it's not grassy. It's orange. Also, now the Venus fire traps are spitting two fireballs each instead of just one. Yeah, World 1 is the only one where they actually only spit one fireball. They spit two in Worlds 3 through, or 2 through 8. Um, actually, I didn't realize that one up was there. Okay, now here you kind of want to go ahead and get all of the coins ahead of time because 2-2 two, two is the white mushroom house stage for world 2 
and you can see all those blocks there, and you can probably guess where that's going. There is a P-switch in here, and we're gonna need to hit it and hurry. Because remember what I said about... Ow. Fish. Yes, remember what I said about owl fish. About white mushroom house levels. They are not very lenient, and oh crap, I'm probably gonna miss it. Okay, I missed two coins. Is that still good enough to get me the white mushroom house? Or blue mushroom house, really? Yeah, that stage was also very short and there wasn't much to it. Okay, good, I still get, did get it. I don't remember the exact coin count in any of the levels, but hello, you found my shop of strange and wonderful things. <laughs> Open this and we get an anchor, which is actually an item that is unique to the Blue Mushroom Houses. You get those from the Blue Mushroom Houses in worlds 2, 4, and 6, and nowhere else in the game, which isn't that much of a problem because the thing isn't very useful. And in fact, if you defeat the world boss on the first try, it doesn't even do anything. What the anchor does is if you use it while you're on the castle stage, then it will prevent the airship from moving. Normally, if you're on the castle and you and you don't beat the airship on your first try, if you die to it, then the airship will actually move elsewhere in the world. Which can be a problem if you didn't clear all of the levels beforehand. But so that makes it doubly extra or doubly not important for me since I'm planning on beating every level anyway. So if I do have to chase down the airship, I won't be needing to well, I won't be getting blocked by any levels I haven't completed. Anyway, on to two fortress. Bit of a different tile set this time. And we have thwomps for the first time in the Mario series, as well as booze. They look a little bit different. They actually have a follower trail now. Whether or not that was the case in the NES version, I'm not sure. Also, our first screen-scrolling pipe. And the boo can still follow you up here, so be careful about that. Also, thwomp, and it's kind of difficult to get power up. Can I actually get this? Yes, I can! Now here, just pretty much run. You can actually wait for those thwomps, but it's generally easier just to hoof it. And more moving foreground, uh, and bad timing. Here, you probably want to go over top. Here, I suppose you can do either. And in case there... yeah, there's nothing over to the right there. At least I don't think there are any invisible blocks or anything. Just wait for the door to get all the way out and open it. And it's boom doom boom time again. We remembered how difficult this guy was before, right? Yeah, he's about the same this time. By which I mean, not at all. Oh hey, and we even get an end spade game. Let's see if I can actually remember where my coin cards were. I think this is a 20 and this was a 10, maybe? Uh, no. Dead wrong. Let's see, this is a 1-up. Okay, we know where that one was. What's this? Okay, good. And that's a flower, and I know this is a flower, so... Uh, let's see, which... What did I say this one was? Uh, mushroom? I already found the other mushroom pair. Um... About this one. Hey! That was pure dumb luck. Okay, now we know where there's another star. Uh, ten. Didn't I just turn that one over? Was it this one? Nope. Well, I know for next time, which would be when I get up to 240,000 or more points. Also, a bit of backtracking here, because there's a mushroom house here. Um, that is the wrong button. Pick a box, its contents will help you on your way. Which one haven't we done yet? The first one? Fire flower, that'll work. So now we're up to 11 items in the inventory. Actually, no wait. Yeah, 11. 
Also, these pipes, this is the first time we've seen these, they transport you from one place on the overworld to a different place with this little mini level here. See, and then we appear at that pipe. Also, there are two Roaming Hammer Brothers this time, or in this case, they're actually Boomerang Brothers, and he got his boomerang off at a kind of silly time. That is a music box, and it is the most useless item in the game, by far. I mean, I said the anchor was useless, but... Basically, what the music box does is, if you use that, it'll put the Roaming Hammer Brothers to sleep for a few turns, or a few deaths, or stage tries, I mean. Um, whoops, trying to go through this stage. The thing is, I don't want to I don't want to skip them. I want to do them to get more items. So pretty well useless. Also, yeah, that other boomerang bro is way over there, and if he had come over here, he actually gives us an item that we can use to smash this block here. And if you do that, you get to skip this level and the next one. And actually I guess you could technically even skip three levels and go right to that pyramid over there. But again, I'm not going to skip levels, and there are better uses for his item if we get it in this episode anyway. So on to 2-3. Jeez, and I thought I was mostly done with the exposition. This one mainly centers on fire snakes and stacks of blocks. Well, at least I can get my flying butt of destiny back. And invincibility. Hello, fire snake. Got a little surprise for you. And since that's basic, Oh, it ran out at just the wrong time. Fortunately, there's another power-up here. But yeah, that and shells, I guess, are kind of the only ways you can really kill fire snakes. Obviously, you can't jump on them. Yeah, see, there. that's what I was talking about with the pile driver micro goombas. Notice how... It looks very similar, but not identical to the other blocks, because its outline is actually just dark gray instead of black. I don't know if that was actually the case in the NES version or not, but... Eh, we're not playing that version, so it's a moot point anyway. Also, if we go up here, we can find more coins. Oh yeah, and this level does have a lot of coins in it. Is there another block there? Nope. Okay, and up here, P-Switch. Remember those large stacks of blocks down there? Coins! So many lovely coins. And you know, the funny thing is, there's actually a hidden 1-up block in here, and it still acts like a 1-up block, even when it's in coin form. It's still solid. You might have seen there for a brief fraction of a second. Ignoring that pile driver micro Goomba and moving on to the end here. Also, I think, yeah, I think a lot of these blocks actually contain coins. And if we're careful here, Koopa shell fun and get the heck out of there. Yeah, you don't really want to jump down there until that Koopa shell is out of the way, which it is now. And I just kind of screwed myself out of those two coins, but oh well. Now that is a multi-coin block, but... Nope. Wanted to pick it up. Yeah, it's kind of a risky one, so... I already lost one of my hit points, and I think I'm gonna pass on it. But who needs the extra lives anyway, because we just got three stars again. And our life count goes up to 36. So now, I think we'll do one last stage for this episode which is an unnumbered one. This is two quicksand, I guess you'd call it. It's two, three and a half, maybe? I don't know why they didn't number this one. And as you might have guessed, that pyramid down there is also a playable level. That's also unnumbered. Weirdness. Why they didn't just make this two, four, and then make two, four and two, five, two, five and two, six, then make the pyramid two, seven, I will never know. Also, you have to get a running start there, because that tornado will otherwise sweep you up and take you backward, and I actually didn't know it still had an effect on you when you weren't touching it there. Also, see that angry-looking sun in the sky there? Well, you get to about this point in the stage, and it starts chasing you. I actually can't... Can you kill this thing? Okay, you cannot. I could have sworn you could defeat that with the shell, but nope. Also, I am not going to try and smash those blocks with the Koopa shells. 
Can I make it to the end before? Okay, good, I still got a star. There is actually one other level where the angry sun, uh, angry sun, angry sun, yes. The angry sun shows up. But that's not for a long while, and we're not going to worry about that just yet. I always used to hate that level as a kid. I was never very good at dodging the angry sun. But now it's simple enough. Anyway, we have another uh, slit path here, but once again, we don't really need to worry about that just yet. That'll be for next time. We'll cover 2-4, 2-5, the pyramid stage, and the castle, or airship if you prefer, in the next episode.